has been one year since my husband and I sold our home, all our belongings, and moved into our travel trailer with our three senior dogs. So much has changed over the last year, and we are still loving the RV lifestyle as much, if not more, than when we first started. This week, we're leaving Georgia and making our way to Maine. In an effort to save money, we decided to try Harvest Host and try our hand at dry camping. Is this gonna be right for us? Will we continue to use it? Well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. That was so stupid. All right, you guys, this one is a quick video. We've been in Georgia for six weeks and we are gonna start making our trek to Maine. We're going nice and slow. We're going at a relaxed pace but we decided in an effort to try and save money that we were gonna take advantage of Harvest Host a little more this year than we did last year. If you don't know, Harvest Host is a paid membership that you pay for annually. It hooks you up with thousands of businesses, public buildings, things like that around the country in an effort to help you stay free or cheap in your journeys. You can book pretty much everything through the app. We have also added on the golf course package and Boondockers Welcome, which is uh, staying at people's homes or on their private property. They say when you're staying at Harvest Host, you should contribute a minimum of $30 to go towards, say it's goods and services, if you're like at a, a restaurant parking lot or a brewery or a winery, something like that. There's a lot of churches on there, so maybe you could just make a donation to the church. But if you have been traveling like we've been traveling, it's getting harder and harder to find those $30 places to stay. A lot of times it's like 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars a night when you're blowing through. So we thought this would be a good alternative this summer to help save us money. One thing we really wanted to try with Harvest Host this season was dry camping, not having any hookups. So we are gonna give it a whack and try it out and see how we like it. If that's something that we want to or could see ourselves doing more in the future. I am realizing how many places I've never been to. I've never been to Tennessee. This was the first time. I mean, it was just a small overnight, but I think that's one of the things that I like about living this lifestyle is we're kind of pushing out into some areas that we've never been before, kind of starting to get out of our comfort zone. I'm hoping to do more of that this fall, but we'll see where that takes us. I haven't really planned anything yet. Our first stay was in the little town of Sweetwater, Tennessee. It was right off of I-81. The name of the stop was the Bass Pond and it was somebody's property. Uh, the one nice thing about this is they had full hookups. So we took advantage of that because they were only charging $35 for full hookups. And if the obligation is roughly $30 you should contribute or donate, it was a no brainer for us to spend the extra $5 and be in the comfort of our own place. This was in like an old, pasture and old field they've obviously done a lot of work it looked like there was a handful of people that were there for a little bit longer term stay but it was super quiet well I think one other rig pulled in besides us and she did tell me around 10 o'clock you have to be careful the coyotes come out make sure your dog's on a leash and attended for she said you'll hear them usually for an hour or two we waited to hear it we never actually heard it I was kind of disappointed that I didn't they apparently live in like an adjacent field and come into that field at night so we did not hear it it was super super quiet it was a chilly morning the next morning but it was super nice we we cleaned and flushed out our tanks for $35 it was totally worth it it was just a mile or two off of the highway and I would go back again they were very kind and uh, very quick with their information so uh, I was happy with the communication and all of that stuff the second place we stayed was in Marion Virginia at a place called Park Place Drive-In Movie Theater and that was going to be our first opportunity to dry camp have no hookups we booked a saturday night at the drive-in which simply means it's time for a movie i couldn't wait i didn't even care what the movie was or anything all right here is our movie selection tonight it's open fridays and saturdays i think it just opened up for the season and tonight we're watching godzilla king kong the new empire yeah what time does that start? Oh, it says 8 p.m. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Yay. 
I just thought of something. We're waiting for the movie to still start. These guys over here, they've done it right. They're sitting outside, they back their truck in, and they have like, I swear, 20 blankets. They are just building a pallet back there that's going to be warm and squishy. It's going to be fun. There's quite a few people here tonight, a lot more than I thought, but I was just talking to Roger and I thought to myself, how cool is this? We get to go to the movies with our dogs. Stella's never been to the movies. Cheech, have you been to the movies? No. We came inside because it's freaking cold outside already. I'm glad I got the little transistor radio because being, you wouldn't necessarily need it outside because they do have a lot of speakers pumping out, but being inside for sure we're gonna need it. So it's nice and warm in here. We're gonna sit at our ta at our desk and watch the movie. Look how close we are. It was a wonderful experience. You know, by the evening there was probably four or five of us uh, camped out in the back two rows. And then I was surprised how many people came for the movie. I love this place. I can't wait to go back again. The only problem that we ran into is we did lose our batteries around 5 or 5.30 in the morning. It was cold. Well, that didn't really go quite as planned. Not enough batteries to turn our heat on. Our batteries died around 5 in the morning. So our fridge isn't on, which isn't a big deal because it's cold anyway. Um, but it's free. <laughs> it's freezing in here. I'm making coffee and I turned on the extra burner. Well, the extra one that works. And I closed off the bedroom and the bathroom to try and put a little warmth in this room. Even Stella was cold and she's never cold, but she wrapped up in a blanket with me and didn't budge. So needless to say, I'm tired. It wasn't the best night's sleep. We do have, it's now 47 degrees in here. It was 44 or 43. So it's gone up a couple degrees. Yeah, I think we I think we need to refigure some of this so that we can be a little more comfortable. Chi Chi, I thought maybe she was dead. I saw something moving in these blankets over here, but she is completely <laughs> under these blankets. She's not dead, everybody. I saw it moving, but I'm not going to disturb her because I don't want to bother her. It's so chilly. I guess we're going to have to reconfigure our boondocking skills. And what are you barking? What did you see? She didn't see anything. Roger, do you love boondocking? I love it. I love it. <laughs> when the sun kicked in uh, and came up over the hill, I noticed that it was doing a good job charging our batteries. So we just left everything, kind of conserved our energy, cleaned up. By the time we were ready to close the slides in, it, we had just enough juice to close the slides, lift up the the RV to get it on, you know, on the hitch and stuff it and leave. So it ended up working out really good. Uh, I was impressed that our solar, we've not really used our solar. I would say one thing that I want to do is I want to beef up my battery bank for sure because I need my fridge to run. I, if I, if it's cold, I want the furnace to run. So we are going to look into some battery options coming up soon, but I would definitely do it again and we didn't have to break out our generator to charge our batteries so to close the slides I, you know the solar panels and the batteries did their job there so i was really happy about that what do you think roger did you like it loved it he loved it so we will definitely be doing more dry camping in the future but as far as our trip up north probably not we're getting into colder and colder weather we were getting evenings into the 50s and 60s when we were in georgia now we're back into like the 30s and 40s at night and knowing that this is not going to keep our camper warm at night is a no-go for me we will not be dry camping for the rest of our time probably on the way up but we were able to save a couple nights and probably cut our costs like in half so I was really happy about that. I guess that's it. I guess that's all I have to say for this week. It's a short and sweet video. It's just about our first experiences uh, boondocking. Uh, we loved it. We can't wait to do it again, but we need to study up a little bit more on what we need. And it was kind of a fail, but not really because we do want to do it again. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching our channel. I hope you got something out of this. I don't ever know how to end these things. Roger says, I enjoyed making it.
That's true. I did enjoy making video this week. Catch us back in our journey on our way to Maine for the summer. Like and subscribe if you like this and you want to see more videos. I do have some playlists on my channel as well. Um, not just RV traveling. There's some DIY when I remodeled our kitchen. There's, there's all kinds of stuff in there. So yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.